So today we're going to do a podcast on density. And if you look here, you have a picture of a duck and an anchor. And you've known for a long time that a duck floats and an anchor sinks. Because if you're in a boat, you would use an anchor, not a duck, to hold your place in the water. And so you could tell me that a duck floats because there's buoyancy, but things float because they're less dense or more dense a lot of times. So you know that an anchor is dense. And so if you look at this right here, this density, oh, density means how much stuff there is packed per unit area. So I'm gonna look at this bolt right here, and this is a really cool picture, isn't it? And this bolt actually is on the bottom. So what does it tell you is on the bottom? It's more dense than everything else in here. And what do you know about the ping pong ball? Well, ping pong ball is full of air, so it's the least dense. So this is kind of like a scale of density from less dense to more dense all the way down, right? And we're gonna make one of these when the fifth graders come, isn't it cool? So you take a graduated cylinder or a tube and you can put all this stuff in here so you can see how things are related to each other on a density scale. So let's look and see what's going on here. Oh cool, this is population density. So you've run into that word in terms of you know population. So what, where do we have here? We have Los Angeles. Oops, I don't want to move the map. So here's LA. Gee, there's a lot of people, no kidding. How about New York City? There's a lot of people. Okay, Washington DC area, somewhere around here. And if you look out here, what's going on out here? Well, this is farmlands, ranch lands, you know, some desert out here. Look at Miami, okay? So if you think about it, you're already familiar with population with density. So let's blow this part up, can we? How about that? So here's New Jersey. Now this is flat, and you and I aren't flat, but this is a good example. This is population density. So per square area, right, square meter, square kilometer, this is per square mile. In Alaska, there's an average of one person per square mile versus New Jersey, which has a thousand people per square mile. Which one's more dense? If you said this one, you're correct. There's more stuff per unit area. This has less stuff per, per, unit, area, per unit area. So this is less dense and this is more dense. So let's go ahead and look at this in terms of a molecular level. And really truly, we need to think of this in terms of like a cube, okay, three-dimensional, like these right here, okay? So if you think about this, what's true? Which one has a greater density? Let me go ahead and erase this so you can see the question. You count the particles. These particles here take up more space, they're larger. And there's three times four is 12 par particles in the same area. And this is seven particles, and they're smaller. So if you said this is more dense than this, then you're correct. This is really easy to see. This is more dense right here, right? Matches, and this is less dense. Okay, so if you come here and look, back to our duck and our anchor. No kidding, anchors float. And here's a pretty picture of pine, not pretty, but a pretty interesting picture of pine and oak. And so if you look at it, I guess you might think that wood floats the same, but look at that, it doesn't. Here's the water level. And if you look, this oak, only a little bit of it's above water, most of it's below. And pine, there's a part that's above water. So it's actually to take this and flip it. Which way would I flip it? Would I put it so that the molecules are lined up this way? Do those match? I think they do, don't they? Because if you look, there's more particles packed in a certain area, so it's gonna sink a little bit more. Still float, but not as well. And this one matches as well, doesn't it? So, let's turn the page here and look. And so if you look at this for a second, this has gotta do with ocean water. And I have a little clip down here um, and so if you look, let's just watch this movie. Ah, sorry. So let me come over my mouse. And we're going to go ahead and play this. I'm going to talk about while we play it. Will it do it? It's not going to do it. 
Why not? Let's try it this way. It's not going to cooperate. No, my stuck. There we go. All right, so this is hot water and cold water. And if you look, the cold water's blue and the hot water's yellow. Cold water, the molecules are not moving as fast. They're packed together. Hot water, the molecules are moving all over the place. They're crazy. So there's not as many molecules in a certain area. And so if you look at this real quick, what's going on? The yellow and the blue do not mix. And why is that? That's because the molecules on top in the hot water are moving so quickly that they don't have time to sink into the blue. So let me speed this up here. If you look, they're going to put the blue on top. Remember, the blue's packed very closely together. The molecules on the bottom and the yellow are hot. They're moving very quickly. And look what happens. The blue mixes. Interesting. So let's go back to our flip chart. Maybe, maybe not. There we go. And so you can actually tie this into the density of ocean water. And if you look down here, what's true? This right here is very dense seawater. It's moving very slowly because it's very cold. Up top, what's going on? It's less dense up here, lower density seawater, because it's warmer. Maybe it's moving around, the velocity of the curtain is moving it. Okay? So, this is a chart. And if you look on the page with your duck, there's also a chart. And this is in terms of kilograms per meters cubed, because now we're talking about three-dimensional structures, right? Not two-dimensional like um, population density. Now we're talking about 3D objects, styrofoam, cork. So let's look for a second. And by the way, in our class, we look at grams per cubic centimeter. But this is looking at larger amounts. And if you look, look at this. Look at gold. Gold is very dense, 19. 1,302 kilograms per cubic meter. Styrofoam, on the other hand, is super light. If you look at the chart on your packet later, you'll see that water is, uh, has a density of 1.0 grams per cubic centimeter, and human fat is 0.92. So you might when you cook, and then you put stuff in the refrigerator, fat floats. Kind of interesting. Gross, but interesting. So this right here is the equation you're going to use. And you're going to use this when you do your worksheets. So I'm going to go ahead and do three problems. And those problems are number three, number four, and number six. Okay? And then you're going to base the rest of your work on this. So density is mass over volume. And we measure volume in grams per milliliter or grams per cubic centimeter. Now, if you want to remember a, a tool, not a crutch, okay, crutch is something you rely on completely, but a tool, you've seen this DMV triangle before perhaps. And if I cover stuff up, if I know the density and I know the mass and I don't know the volume, that's my question, my X, this chart tells me to take mass divided by volume, right? Now, what if I know the density and the volume, and I don't know the mass? I'm going to multiply. That's what my chart tells me to do. My DMV triangle, like Department of Motor Vehicles, D, M, V. M's on the mountain, V's on the valley. Now, what else can I do? My other combination is if I know mass and volume and I don't know density, I put mass over volume. All right, so and we'll talk about how to manipulate the algebra later, but for right now, that's what I want you to do, okay? So let's look at this. For number three, you have what is the weight, which should actually say what is the mass, of the ethanol that exactly fills a 200 milliliter container. So you have this container, 
right, like a graduated cylinder or something, and it's 200 milliliters, and it's full completely, all the way with alcohol. All right, and the density of ethanol, ethanol is a kind of alcohol, so density of ethanol is 0.789 grams per milliliter, and that's because it's a liquid. If it's a liquid, we measure it in grams per milliliter. So we know that we have 0 0.789 grams per every milliliter. So every single milliliter in here weighs, has a mass of 0.789 grams. Now, what am I gonna do? You can use your DM via triangle. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into this formula right here. So I know density, don't I? I know it's 0.789 grams per milliliter. And I know the volume, and the volume is 200 milliliters, and I don't know mass. I'm solving for x. This up here is my x. I know my density in grams per milliliter. I know my volumes in milliliter, and I don't know my mass. So what are you going to do? You take these two numbers and you multiply them. So if I take 200 times 0.789, my answer is 31560. And the answer in units, I'm finding mass. What are my units for mass? They're grams. So my answer is going to be in grams. And if you look, what's our DMV triangle say? We know density and we know volume. What do we do when we don't know this one? This is my question mark. You multiply. That's exactly what we did. That was number three. So now we're going to go ahead and try number four. All right, what do we know? Well, we have a rectangular block of copper. So here's my rectangular block. All right, and we know it has 8.4 centimeter dimension by 5.5 by 4.6. What's that mean? That means length times width times height. So I'm going to take 8.4 centimeters by 5.5 centimeters by 4.6 centimeters. And the equation is length times width times height. You remember that from math. And that measures the volume. So I'm going to take 8.4 times 5.5 times 4.6. And when I multiply those numbers together, I get, hmm, maybe I should do my math here. <laughs> so let's do that. You do it on your calculator while I'm doing it. I get 212.52. I can write. Sorry. And while I'm at it, I'm going to get rid of this rectangle. And what is that unit in? Well, this is centimeters and centimeters and centimeters, so that's centimeters cubed. Now, if you notice, we're not using a liquid, we're using a solid. So this is what I use when I use solids. And they're equal to each other. So that's my volume. What do I know? What else do I know? I know it has a mass. It weighs this many grams. So. What do I know? My equation is density equals mass divided by volume. So I'm going to take 1896 grams and divide it by 212.52 cubic centimeters. If you notice, I'm going to go ahead and do my numbers first. And that is 8.192. And what were my units going to be? My units are going to be grams per cubic centimeter. Grams per cubic centimeter. That's my density. How much stuff is packed per unit area. Now if I was to use my triangle, I know my mass and I know my volume. I don't know my density. I divide, don't I? Okay? All right, last example. Last example is number six. 
And number six says you have a mass of, that's not a mass, that's a volume. So go ahead and change that 250.0 milliliters to grams. So I have a mass of 250.0 grams of benzene. And we don't use that anymore. We used to use it because um, it was a good solvent, but it causes cancer. So let me rewrite this, actually. I'm going to go ahead and use black. Density equals mass divided by volume. Right? We're using this equation. And if we had a liquid, we'd be using this form. So with our rewrite, that's 250.0 grams. Do I know my volume? I do not. So this is my question. Do you know my density? I do. So I know these two. So I'm going to divide, aren't I? So what is my density? That's my x. My density is 0.8765. And what are my units? Grams per milliliter. Because look at this. I'm going to end up with grams per milliliter. I don't know my volume right now. I'm going to teach you a trick because a lot of kids would do 0.8765 times 250, and that is not right. When you solve for x, do not do that. You actually have to get x out of the bottom, don't you? So you're going to put your finger on x and your finger on 0.8765, and you're going to say, when x is in the bottom, you do the Faley flip. Watch. Is x in the bottom here? No, x is in the top. So you simply multiply. You multiply these two numbers. What happens here? Oh, x is in the bottom. What do you say? When x is in the bottom, you do the Faley flip, which means I'm going to go and take this. Get rid of this junk here. And I'm simply going to take this x and put it over here, and this 0.8765 and put it down there. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to solve your problem. So when you do that, you are actually going to end up with, let's do my calculator here, 250. You should be doing it also. Divided by 0.8765. And the answer is 285.2. And what are my units? They're milliliters, because that's what I'm solving for. I'm solving for volume. Now let me just show that to you for a second real quick here, so you can actually see how this math works out, if you don't believe me. Let's get rid of these units. If I was actually to solve for x, doing it the longhand algebra way, I'll go ahead and use a different color, I would multiply both sides by x, wouldn't I? Because I need to get x out of the bottom and get it by itself. So that cancels this out. Now, I have x on this side, and I need to get it by itself, so I divide both sides by 8765. What's that do to this? It cancels this out. That was really bad. <laughs> and what happens? Look, the x switched. So you're not being lazy by saying if x is in the bottom, you do the Faley flip. Just do it. And you still need to know how to do the algebra, but this is a quick trick. So hope that helped, and go ahead and work on your packet.